Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am Mr. Photographer. Dot com. Recently, whenever I've posted a Luminar 4 how-to video, several people have commented asking me if I could do a video demonstrating how I use Luminar 4 as a Lightroom plugin. Specifically, they're wondering what my workflow is. So I thought in this video I would do that, but I want to mention that there's a lot of variation here because it really depends what I'm going to be doing in Luminar 4. If I'm just going to uh, send an image from Lightroom into Luminar 4 to use something that's in Luminar that's not in Lightroom, it could be relatively simple. What I would typically do is do some preliminary Lightroom processing that's going to be tone and color. Then I would send it over to Luminar and then I would do, let's say, color balance, which isn't available in Lightroom. Maybe I'll do the color balance filter or maybe I'm going to use the detail enhancer filter that's not available in Lightroom and then I would just bring it back into Lightroom after I did that and do some finishing processing whatever the image needs and I usually end it with a vignette. Well what I thought is I'm going to demonstrate to you like the most convoluted scenario that is where I'm processing an image in Lightroom but I want to replace the sky with a sky that I already have in my Lightroom library so I'm not going to use a sky that is available inside a Luminar. I'm going to use a sky that I already have because then it's a little more difficult and a little more steps involved. But once you learn this, you'll learn how I do just about anything from Lightroom to Luminar. And I know most of you still, or many of you still aren't um, in Luminar exclusively from what I've understand understanding. You're still uh, using Lightroom, you have thousands of images in Lightroom and you don't want to give it up, but you want to take advantage of what is in Luminar uh, to process your images. So this is a great example. Now, for this example, recently I went to Letchworth State Park, which is probably about an hour from where I live. And as you could see, as I page through the images, the, the day uh, just kind of stunk. Uh, there was not a cloud in the sky. I got there in middle afternoon. So... Uh, the, you know, the sun was very direct, high up in the sky, and it, overall the images are boring. So I think these are good candidates to replace the sky. Now what I do, and as I mentioned, I do some preliminary processing in Lightroom first. So I have this image here. This is the one I've decided I'm going to process and I want to replace the sky in Luminar. So I'll go to the basic tab of Lightroom and I'll do some preliminary processing. I'll, I'll bring the uh, highlights down, open up the shadows. I'm going to get a white point. I'm going to hold the alter option key, click on the whites slider, move that to the right until I see some colors coming through, then back that off until all that color is gone because I do not want to clip the highlights. I want them unclipped, like right about there. Similarly for blacks, I'll hold that alter option key and click on the blacks and move that to the left. And I like to clip the shadows a little bit. When you clip the shadows, there's no detail there. It's just absolute black. And I kind of like that. I think it gives my image more tonal depth. Then I'll jump down to clarity, move that to the right a little bit, texture as well to the right a little bit, um, bring dehaze down or up a little bit. I'm sorry. Uh, that way we'll bring saturation up quite a bit on this image. It's not very colorful. Uh, then I'm going to jump down to the HSL panel and we'll go to the luminance tab. I'm going to make yellows brighter. I'm going to make greens brighter too. I'm not going to do anything with blues since we're replacing that sky anyway. I will go to the saturation tab though and I'll increase saturation of the yellows and the greens a little bit just to try to get a little more color in here. And then I'll go to the detail tab. It already added a default amount of sharpening. It was shot at very low ISO. I will add a little bit of noise reduction, maybe around 30. Um, I will have all the gear and exposure information listed in the description below this video. Also, I have a discount code for Luminar. It saves you, I believe, 10 bucks uh, on the price of Luminar. I'll have that listed in the description below this video as well. All right, so this is pretty much the processing I would do on any image before I sent it over into Luminar. But in this instance, there's a little twist. I need to find a sky for it as well that is in my Lightroom library. So what I do now is uh, first I do two things. I need to find this image again. After I click off it and go look for a sky, I need to quickly come back to this image. So what I do is I put it in a collection. 
So I'll go over here to the collection in the left hand tab, click on the plus sign. I'm going to go create collection. I'm just going to call it Luminar. You could call it anything you like. I'm going to include the selected photo and I'm not going to sync it with Lightroom Mobile. So we're not going to do that. I'm not going to do anything else. So I'm just going to put this image in a collection. We're going to click create. All right, now it's in the collection. I could find it very easily now. Now I need to find a sky where the light kind of matches. Now, if I look at, uh, zoom in a little bit, uh, you could see that the sun was very high in the sky. So the shadows are very short, but they are a little bit from the upper right-hand side to the lower left-hand side. So the sun was probably over my right shoulder, uh, very high up in the sky, as you could see some of these, the way these shadows are being thrown. So I need to find a sky that is similar. Now what I do is I like to compare the skies to this image and instead of clicking back and forth between the folder of my skies and this uh, collection with this image, what I do is I put this image in its own window. To do that, when you're in the develop module, on the left hand side, see the numbers one and two? Just click on two. Now this image is in this window. Go to this little drop down and click on locked. That means it's going to stay locked in that window. So whatever image you put in the main window, this image will always stay in this window. So now we go to the folder that contains my skies. Now I have a number of folders. We're going to go to the library module and we're going to go to the skies. And I actually picked out a sky ahead of time to save a little time. You can see I have all these folders of skies. It's in part seven and it's this one right here. Um, as we look at it, the light uh, is pretty much straight up above, maybe slightly to the right, as you can see how this cloud is more lit on the right side, just slightly. I think it will fit this image just fine. So now I need to either know exactly where this image is, the sky image is on my hard drive so that I could find it when I'm in Luminar, or in my case, because I got like 65,000 images in my Lightroom library, I'm just going to export this image as a JPEG. It's a JPEG already. I'm going to export it to my desktop so I could easily find it. Now this step of course is optional. If you know exactly where this image is, then you could just bring it, call it from Luminar where it is, but I'm going to export it. I'm going to go to file, export, and I'm going to export the original image because it's a JPEG. If it was a raw image, I would then still export it as a JPEG and I wouldn't resize it. I'll leave it the full size and I'm going to export it to the desktop. So just like that, and we'll click export. All right, so that is done. I could close down the secondary window now, and I could go to where our um, original image is here, right? Because we just uh, saved it right here. And now to this catalog, I should say. Now I wanna send this to Luminar. I'm gonna right click, and we're gonna go down to edit in, and we're gonna go down to Luminar 4. Now, as far as the edit photo with Luminar dialog box, we're gonna only choices to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments because this is a raw file. And when you use Luminar 4 as a Lightroom plugin, it will, um, it doesn't read the edits we did in Lightroom. So we have to send it over either as a TIFF, PSD or JPEG. I suggest you use TIFF. And then I'm gonna use the Profoto RGB color space. It really doesn't matter what color space you use. 16 bits per component. I'm gonna use a resolution of 360 because I use Epson printers and Epson printer recommends that that's the resolution you should use if you have a printed image. So I'm gonna leave it at that, no compression, and we're gonna click edit. Now what Lightroom is gonna do, it's gonna create that TIFF file. And when it creates that TIFF file, it will send it over into Luminar 4 with all that processing baked in that I just did. Okay, it opened up in Luminar 4, and I'm going to get rid of the uh, looks panel over there at the bottom. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to replace the sky right away because I did some processing in Lightroom already. So we're going to go to the Creative tab. We're going to go to AI Sky Replacement, Sky Selection. I mentioned we're not using any of the built-in skies. We're going to go to the Load Custom Sky Image. I saved it on my desktop. As you can see, it was an Adobe Stock image. So we'll click on that and we'll click open and Luminar then will magically place this in the image and it kind of relit the image as well. You could see as we have uh, these uh, more clouds over towards the right and it kind of made it a little darker over here. You could see there's before 
and there's after. So it affect, affected the actual lighting as well. Now, of course, I have many videos on how to replace, how to use this filter, how to replace the sky using Luminar. And you could go down to advanced settings, and if the light isn't quite right, you could flip it, uh, click there, and maybe it would be more applicable to your image. In this case, I don't think it does. I think it looks better this way. This side of this mountain is more brightly lit than over here. So it's obvious the sun was over my right shoulder and you could see how the light is hitting this more on the right side, this cloud here more on the right side than it is on the left. Now, if there's anything else you want to do here in Luminar, just remember it's going to affect the original image and not the sky. For example, if I go to light and if I just take exposure down, see how it's not affecting the sky? It's only affecting the original image. So if you need to equalize anything, the sky is maybe a little bright compared to the bottom part or vice versa, you could come in here and just affect the original image so it better matches the sky. On the other hand, if you want to do any adjustments that affect the entire image and you want to do these adjustments in Luminar and not in Lightroom, then what you'll need to do is go up to the a Layers tab, click on the little plus sign right here, and you want to create a new stamped layer. So what it's going to do, it's just going to combine the sky layer and the original image together and put that on top. So then any adjustments you do will affect the entire image. So those are the options you have. If you just need to equalize something, the sky is a little bit different color or different brightness level than the original image, then just start adjusting the um, image as is and you'll adjust the original image on the other hand if you want to adjust anything everything put the stamp layer on there then when you go down to let's say light and you go to exposure you'll see you're darken everything down now so you could then do adjustments to the entire image now in this case it didn't really matter i'm fine with this i'm just going to click apply and what it will do now it's going to actually send this TIFF file. Remember we created the TIFF and it's going to send it over into Lightroom. Now one quick note, you do not have to do that stamped layer when you send it back into Lightroom if you just want to do Lightroom adjustments because it's going to create that stamp layer by default when it goes over into Lightroom. Lightroom, not that it creates it, Lightroom doesn't recognize the layers. So Lightroom will, any adjustments you do will be on the entire image no matter what. So you don't have to create the stamp layer is what I'm trying to say. So to finish off, we'll just go to effects and I'll put a vignette on it like this. Midpoint out a little bit and there. So that's my workflow. I think doing it this way, showing you the most convoluted workflow, meaning my most involved workflow, that is replacing the sky with the sky from my own Lightroom library, I will help you better understand what I do uh, when I'm processing images uh, in Lightroom that I then send over to Luminar to do something to and then bring it back into Lightroom. So I hope that made sense. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>